Every year we debate about whether Die Hard qualifies as the ultimate Christmas movie. Well, you might be thinking, do I want to watch the 67th Vanessa Hudgens Netflix Christmas movie, or are there any other Christmas movies like Die Hard that are about action and thrills? Well, there is a filmmaker who's been crafting Christmas-themed stories since the 80s into the 2000s, specializing in buddy action movies with witty dialogue. So strap in for a ride, because the holiday spirit isn't just about sleigh bells and snow. It's about tough guys, misfit buddies, and witty banter. So, let me try, and perhaps fail, at shoehorning the Christmas connection into these five films either written or directed by none other than... Mr. Shane Black. Die Hard is the most famous Christmas action movie out there, but Lethal Weapon started the bloody tradition a year earlier. Raj, meet your new partner. Oh, I'm too old for this shit. While it features a regrettable mullet on a truly regrettable person now, Lethal Weapon features a shootout at a Christmas tree farm and the climactic fist fight takes place on the lawn of an elaborately holiday decorated house, surrounded by a helicopter's spotlight and Christmas lights. Yes, it's a balls-to-the-wall action movie about drug smuggling, special forces, and torture, but the Christmas setting tells us that it's really about Riggs and Murtaugh becoming partners for life. And if you think about it, with Riggs giving up his suicidal thoughts, and in the end gifting Murtaugh with the bullet he was going to use to kill himself on Christmas, having finally found catharsis in the end, it's basically the story from It's a Wonderful Life. And, no one's ever too old for that shit. Probably the most dark and nihilistic movie in this list, and I'll admit, the one with the least connection to Christmas itself. Before you throw your drink at the TV or computer screen, hear me out, there's a twisted reference to Satan Claus, not Santa Claus, thanks to the lead character's foul-mouthed daughter, I'll just leave it at that. Roger Ebert famously called it a superb example of what it is, a glossy, skillful, cynical, smart, utterly corrupt and vilely misogynistic action thriller. And he couldn't be more right, but there is a reason for this. Black supposedly wrote the script after two years brooding over a breakup, and he seems to have channeled all his feelings of bitterness and failure into this character of Joe Howlenbeck, a down-on-his-luck private detective played by Bruce Willis. Co-starring Damon Wayans as ex-football player Jimmy Dix, together the two misfits investigate the case of Jimmy's murdered ex-girlfriend. What they discover is a deep-seated corruption going on between a crooked politician and the owner of a pro football team with a series of shootouts, mishaps, and beatings, leading up to the film's ludicrous quarterback riding a horse, and perhaps the most satisfying death scene of a villain involving a helicopter. You ever touch me again? I kill you! For someone who has been criticized for being misogynistic, Shane Black somewhat redeems himself and came up with this story with a strong female lead, and to top it off, one who manages to save the lead male character. Having headlines for his script being sold for a then record $4 million, The Long Kiss Goodnight delivers his trademark combination of impressive action set pieces and sharp dialogue. Samuel L. Jackson plays Mitch, a crooked cop turned low-rent private detective, who pairs up with school teacher Samantha, played by Gina Davis, when her former assassin identity, Charlie, slowly comes back in violent ways. The success of the film ultimately rests with Gina Davis, who absolutely pulled off the split personality premise, and manages to be both endearing and scary in her dual roles, and to top it off, is a credible action star with all her own stunt work. Amidst the gunfights and explosions, Davis and Jackson form the heart of the film in a mixed-gender take on the classic buddy cop formula. How could Charlie know that recalling her forgotten past would form a lifelong bond between her and Mitch that survives bombs and shotgun blasts? It took many explosions and mayhem and a few strings of Christmas lights to make it clear. is I'm playing a little game called Am I Luffing? Huh? Where is she? Where the fuck is Harmony? Harry. You wanna play hardball? I can do that. Where is the girl? What did you just do? I just, I put in one bullet, didn't I? I you put, put a one. live round in that gun? Oh yeah, there was like an 8% chance. Eight Wasn't percent. it just eight? Eight? Yeah. 
Who taught you math? Shane Black's directorial debut. It's Christmas time in the City of Angels. Robert Downey Jr. stars as a thief pretending to be an actor who gets paired up with a private eye to help him with his role in a hard-boiled crime story turned comedy of errors. This was the comeback role for Downey before he helped to launch the MCU with his character ending up in Hollywood through a string of coincidences, teaming up with a very funny Val Kilmer, and reconnects with his childhood sweetheart, played by an underrated Michelle Monaghan, complete with a sexy Santa's outfit. It's brutal, bloody, painfully funny, and will make you think twice about where you put your fingers. Why is the Christmas setting relevant? Honestly, not that much, but telling this story against the backdrop of the seedy Los Angeles and grimy alleyways makes the character's need for holiday spirit that much stronger. Nice time, I don't want to um, do thing, and I'm just... I don't know if this guy's your boyfriend or not, but just so you know, when you were in the bathroom, he was totally checking me out. What? Due to the relatively muted reception to Iron Man 2, Robert Downey Jr. turned to Shane Black to write and direct a sequel, which came out after the massive success of the Avengers. And you guessed it, he also applies his Christmas magic to the MCU, setting the template for the Hawkeye series that is even more explicitly about the need for Christmas spirit. Halfway through the movie, Stark gets stranded in a small town and is separated from everyone he loves, and having to befriend a kid who's a little like a young version of himself, giving their scenes a real A Christmas Carol vibe. Also, when Tony Stark is testing out his new Iron Man suit, the scene is set to a remix Jingle Bells. Iron Man 3 ultimately grounds the story back to the real world, makes us invest into the Tony Stark character, and in hindsight, probably one of the best entries in the MCU, now especially true after the recent misfires. We are talking about you, Quantumania, and the Marvels. So, do these movies actually need to be set in Christmas? Not at all. But, as these movie shows, during Christmas, when you are down on your luck, all you really need is just family. Especially after you kill some bad guys and trade a few insults, and end up with partners for life. Did I succeed in convincing you that Shane Black is the king of Christmas movies? Tell me your thoughts and leave your comments below. And if you like this video, and want to know more about a few rewatchable Christmas movies, click on the link on the left. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video, for more awesome movie related content.